what's going on guys your boy terabyte reacts here back with another reaction here and today we're gonna jump into something a little bit different something i thought i would never ever because you know i've never really really thought about the three-eyed raven because you know he wasn't featured that much in the show you know what i'm saying like we understand the importance of him and you know him um trying to teach bran the ways of you know him becoming the new three-eyed raven but you know i never really gotten um you know what was taught behind because this video is called blood raven um what's the three-eyed raven's secret plan right so I've never really thought about it like this, but somebody sent me, suggested this video, so I'm reacting to it. It's 20 minutes long, but uh, it's whatever. There's going to be some really interesting stuff here. This is from All Chief X. I hope you guys go over there and show him some love. Um, let him know that people love his videos. Of course, I know his, his subscribers. Let him know that he has a lot of subscribers, too. What the hell? What? Damn, 890K. That is a lot of subscribers oh my god that's crazy but um but as a personal mind milestone of mine you know what i'm saying i just hit 800 subscribers so i'm happy about that i'm ecstatic about it to be honest i mean i i just came home because i because when i'm out of my house i don't really check the status for the channel i really don't because then i get caught up replying to y'all comments so i just don't do it so when i get home i just sit down you know, get within myself, relax, and take in the comments, okay? So, I hope you guys out there doing what you're supposed to do, man. You know, it's the end of the year. Um, looking forward to the next year. I'm glad that I hit 800 before the end of the year. That was a goal of mine coming up from starting the channel in september so in four months hit 800 subscribers i'm happy about it. i'm happy for our growth the engagement the engagement on the channel is absolutely great i'm gonna do a channel update um separately so i hope you guys go out and watch that just to you know talk to you guys a little bit about you know the channel going forward i love to do the channel updates because it keeps you guys understanding what's going on with the channel why certain shows are not being done con currently right now we're in the holiday season so it's pretty busy i'm brave i'm busy okay so that's the reason why like the, the other reactions like i haven't continued black mirror or the walking dead it's just um i think next um coming this coming week i should be able to get those um some new episodes out of you know peaky blinders the walking dead um also um the next episode of black mirror definitely gonna get that there's a couple of new shows i want to start too that i told you guys i was going to do as soon as i get the chance to do those guys because i'm gonna have um a little bit of um i'm gonna have some time on my hands to get those things done okay so i don't want to talk too much during this video i just want to get on with it um uh, because this is going to be the reaction for tonight and then you guys are going to have some reactions for um tomorrow night which is going to be pre-recorded so this is a reaction you're going to get tonight hope you guys support it and then i have some videos recorded um that is coming out tomorrow night some more game of thrones stuff okay so um because tomorrow i have to record the super reaction for an anime and also the other the other anime so um tomorrow i have some game of thrones stuff scheduled for my game of thrones guys and then i'm gonna have the um the animes are gonna drop later in the night okay so thank you guys for tuning in man let's jump into this video let's see what the, what all shift x is talking about um the three-eyed raven let's go boom let's get the headphones on bow <gasps> free audiobook visit audible.com slash asx in the game of thrones show the three-eyed raven is a pretty standard character He's like Obi-Wan or Dumbledore, a wise old mentor who teaches a hero magic and then dies. But in the books, he has a rich backstory. He was a warrior who fought his brothers, a spymaster who ruled a kingdom, and a leader of the Night's Watch, who becomes one of the most powerful and mysterious characters in the series. 
His grand plan involves the old gods and Azora High, Bran Stark and Jon Snow, maybe Daenerys and Quaithe, and even Euron Greyjoy. In the books, he's called the Three-Eyed Crow, but his real name is Brynden Rivers. Brynden oh, was born 125 okay. years ago. The King of Westeros yeah, back old. then was Aegon IV Targaryen, a terrible, selfish, lustful king. He was married to his sister, Nerys, because the Targaryens love incest, and they had a son called Daeron. But Aegon took many other women as lovers and fathered bastard children, including Daemon Waters, Aegor Rivers, Shiera Seastar, and Brynden Rivers, the man who would become the Three-Eyed Crow. Brynden was an albino, with pale skin, white hair, and red eyes. He had a wine-stained birthmark on his face that was shaped kind of like a raven, so Brynden was called Blood Raven. Brynden wasn't as big and strong as his half-brothers, but he was smart and good with a longbow. Brynden's half-sister Shiera was famously beautiful, and Brynden and Aegor competed for her love. Shiera chose Brynden as her lover, but Brynden and Aegor came to hate each other. Aegor was called Bittersteel. Daemon, meanwhile, was a golden boy who everyone loved, which complicated politics, because when King Aegon died, his trueborn son, Daeron, inherited the throne but some people preferred Daemon. So with the help of Bittersteel, Daemon rebelled. He took the name Blackfire and fought a war against Daeron for the throne. This was the first Blackfire rebellion, and it ended at the Battle of the Red Grass Field. Brynden fought for Daeron and the Loyalists. He rained arrows on the Blackfires, killing Daemon and two of his sons. Then Bittersteel attacked and fought a duel with Brynden. Brynden lost an eye in this fight, but in the end, Aegor fled. So, Brynden helped to save the realm from Blackfire rebels, but to do it, he killed his own half-brother Daemon. Kinslaying mm. is a terrible crime in Westeros. But Brynden is willing to do bad things for the sake of the greater good, and for the sake of defeating Bittersteel. Bittersteel went east, founded an army called the Golden Company, and plotted with the surviving Blackfires. King Daeron later died in a plague, so Daeron's son Ares became the new king. But Ares wasn't much interested in being king. He was obsessed with old books about magic and prophecy. So Ares chose Brynden to be his hand of the king, and Brynden basically ruled the realm for him. Brynden was a spymaster with a huge network of informers. It was said that Bloodraven had a thousand eyes and one. The one eye on his face and the thousand eyes of his spies. Brynden watched for anyone who spoke treason against the Targaryens, or supported the surviving Blackfires. He was so focused on the Blackfires that he ignored an ironborn invasion, and the realm also suffered from drought and other problems. So many people hated Bloodraven. They called him a kinslayer, a bastard, and a sorcerer. Because like Ares, Brynden was known to study magic. It was said that he and his lover Shiera used sorcery to uncover secrets, and that Brynden could change his face or his shape, which might actually be true. In a Game of Thrones prequel book, Daemon Blackfire's son tries to start a second Blackfire rebellion, but Bloodraven's spies uncover the plot with the help of a really suspicious guy called Maynard Plum. Plum knows too much, he makes weird references to Bloodraven, and there's something strange about his face. Plum disappears from the story just before Bloodraven arrives, so it's strongly hinted that Maynard Plum is actually Bloodraven in disguise. Plum wears a moonstone brooch, which suggests that Bloodraven uses a glamour, the same kind of magic that Melisandre uses with her ruby. So there's truth to these rumours. Bloodraven uses magic to spy and control the kingdom. Years later, there was a third Blackfire rebellion, where Brynden beat Bittersteel again, and after that, King Aerys died, and his brother Mykar became king. Then when Mykar died, there was a succession problem, because most of Mykar's children were dead or dumb or female. So Bloodraven called a big meeting to decide who should be the next king. He even invited a surviving Blackfire to the council. Bloodraven pinky promised that he totally wouldn't kill the Blackfire when he arrived, and when he arrived, Bloodraven totally killed him. <laughs> the council chose I'm Aegon done, V bro. Targaryen, or <laughs> Yo, yo, what is good with Blood Raven, bruh? What is good? Like, this dude is just like going around. He just looks like killing everybody. He's like, yo, we don't want no black fire up in this piece, bruh. 
I don't care who they be or why they coming. We gonna take them out one by one. Cause every time I see one of these mother lovers, you know what I'm saying? Every time I see one of these mother lovers, man, they out here just trying to kill Targaryens or starting some black fire rebellion. What's wrong with these guys, man? I don't care why he coming. We gonna kill him. Okay? That's what we doing. Alright? That is what we doing. <laughs> Yo, this this guy might be, I mean, com in comparison, like, this dude must have been the most infamous hand of the king ever. He had to be. This dude was just taking dudes out. He don't care who it is. He's just like, ah, these black fire dudes, they gotta go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Egg to be the next king. And the first thing King Egg did was to arrest Bloodraven. Because if the mm. hand of the king goes around killing people he promised not to kill, people would stop trusting the government. That is true. Brynden argued that he had sacrificed his own honor for the good of the realm. Mm. But still, he had to be punished. So he was sent to join the Night's Watch on the Wall. Maester ah. Aemon joined the Watch at the same time. Brynden eventually became Lord Commander of the Watch and led them for years, until one day he went off for a ciggy and never came back, presumed dead beyond the wall. The next time we see Brynden is 50 years later, when Bran meets him as the Three-Eyed Crow. So, what happened? How did this Targaryen bastard become an ancient tree wizard? And what does he want? Magic in Game of Thrones is connected to family heritage, or blood. The Targaryen family with the blood of Valyria are connected to dragons and fire magic. The mm -hmm. Stark family with the blood of the First Men are connected to the Old Gods, weirwood trees, and warging magic. Bloodraven is special because he has the blood of both Valyria and the First Men. His father is a Targaryen, and his mother is a Blackwood. The Blackwood family descend from the First Men, and the heraldry is a weirwood tree, a symbol of the Old Gods. It's hinted that Brynden was into the Old Gods from early on, his longbow at the red grass field was made of weirwood. Brynden's pale skin and red eyes look just like a weirwood's face, with white bark and red sap eyes. And the rumours that Brynden could transform into a dog and control wolves and spy with crows sounds just like skin-changing powers, like how Bran walks into animals. Maybe young Brynden could do that too. He might also have had green dreams, visions of the future like Jojen has. And at the Night's Watch, Brynden might have seen the threat of the White Walkers. So, Brynden was drawn north, beyond the wall, to a cave beneath a great weirwood tree. Brynden merged with the weirwood, its roots growing through his body, extending his life and heightening his power as a green seer, which means he skin changes into animals, sees through the eyes of trees, and has visions of future and past. Brynden sat dreaming, watching, and scheming for 50 years, waiting for Bran Stark. Apparently, Bran has a special destiny as a greenseer like Brynden. So Brynden visits Bran in dreams in the form of a three-eyed crow, and tells him to fly, to wake his magic, and he sends Jojen to take Bran north. Brynden says Bran is important for the war against the White Walkers, and it looks like he's right. In the show, Bran uses his powers to spy on the Walkers with ravens, and he has psychic contact with the Night King. It looks like Brynden succeeds in empowering Bran to fight for life against the Night, but Brynden's influence goes much deeper. When Jon Snow joins the Night's Watch, Lord Commander Mormont has a pet raven, and the raven speaks, usually just repeating words that it hears, but sometimes it seems to understand what's happening and influences the story. When the Watch elects a new Lord Commander, the Raven says Snow, 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 and lands on Jon's shoulder, which helps get Jon chosen as leader. The bird often- Wait a minute here, man, like... Why in God's name would they not put stuff like this in the show? Like, stuff like this is, you know, it just... I understand certain things that certain aspects that they changed but stuff like this didn't need to be changed you get you get what i'm saying like stuff like this would have been very important for them to show because the importance of the three eyed the three eyed ravens would have been much more um shown and you would understand what what his role uh, was way before we even met him 
You understand what I'm saying? Or when we met him, we would have understand. Oh, so this guy was the one watching everybody. That's why the crow was talking. You know what I'm saying? Like we would have been able to connect certain things, but the show left out. So they left out a lot. And this is one point I would give to the book readers and understanding why they don't like certain things. Certain changes just didn't need to happen. You get what I'm saying? Like this was just straight up just omitted. It was just omitted. It was just said, no, F that we not doing that. You know what I'm saying? You get, cause this would have been ve something very simple to do in the show to have a, cr a, a Raven talking. Like how hard is that to do? Like you don't need CGI to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, people has been making animals talk, um, in, in movies and, and, and shows way before, you know what I'm saying? Like we had, you know, the age of CGI and, and, and green screen. So it's like, I know green screen has been available for years. They just, it wasn't that prominent as it is now, you know, the scale that it is done on today, you know, and to make it seem seamless, it wasn't like like that back in the day if you guys um don't know that but i mean something like this would have been easy for them to do in the show and it wouldn't have messed anything up just to have a raven talking and land on john's shoulder you know what i'm saying but i mean let's go back a little bit here catch back some of the speech here all right and what's happening, and influences the story. When the Watch elects a new Lord Commander, the Raven says snow, 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 and lands on John's shoulder, which helps get John chosen as leader. The bird often says King around John. In Book 5, it says King Snow, John Snow. And just before that, the Raven appears in a dream John has, where he fights dead men with a burning sword. So, what's happening here? Many readers believe that this raven is controlled from afar by Blood Raven. We do know that he uses birds to spy and enter dreams, mm -hmm. so he's probably using this bird to spy on the Night's Watch and to influence John. Brynden not only helps John lead the Night's Watch, it looks like he wants John to be the king of Westeros, which might be why in season six Brynden shows Bran John's birth. As the son of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen, John is the heir to the Iron Throne. And he has the blood of both the first men. Hold on a second. Bruh. Bruh. Come on, man. How do you leave this out of the show? HBO, come on, bruh. How do you leave this out of the show? Are you serious? Look at the times. Look at the times, bro. I mean... It would totally make a lot, lot of sense because him, Brendan, Blood Raven, being loyal to House Targaryen would totally be tying into him wanting John to be king because he would know that John is a Targaryen. He would know that John is also from House Stark. Bruh, how could they leave this out of the show? We still wouldn't have figured the shit out until season seven or maybe six, our end of season six. So it wouldn't have, uh, you know what? Let me stop, man, because um, I some of the times, like, you know, and, and it's not like I've never understood why, you know, certain people are upset about the show and why they say the show goes downhill, which I I think it does. You know, I have, as I've stated when I was watching and reacting to it, I think the show did go downhill as in dialogue wise. Some characters just, you know, the things their character that have established over the series just didn't seem like it was going the same way like the characters just change all of a sudden you know don't get me wrong seasons were still epic as i said as i would give season one through four um season one through five 
I would give a 10 out of 10. But 6 and 7, definitely a 9 out of 10 for me. Even though Season 7 was just, it was just spectacle. Let's not get it twisted. All Season 7 was, was spectacle. A couple of callbacks to previous seasons, you know, maybe two, maybe three episodes had good dialogue, some good conversations between people like, um... The convers the um the little conversation that Beric and John had when they were went to go get the white like that was very good. There's other scenes too that was that um uh, pretty good. I'm not talking about the action, like just dialogues. That's like stuff that happened. The stuff that happened when they all met up at um at the um oh my god I can't remember when they all met up and they showed Cer Cersei the 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 um the white right. Like that scene was pretty cool. The stuff that John said, you know what I'm talking when he was talking about, you know, if y'all just start telling little lies, you know, then, you know, nobody would know who to believe and what to believe anymore, which is very true. Like stuff like that was pretty cool about season seven. But as I said, it still didn't live up to the hype of season one through five, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. It don't have to be yours. It was still enjoyable. As I said, I'm not going to say it was a 5 out of 10. As I said, it just dropped one point for me, a 9 out of 10. You know, because that great, the great things about Game of Thrones that was established through those first five seasons, it just did not happen for the last two. You know, great stuff happened. Don't get me wrong. Story progressed very well, but those things just, just didn't do it for me. So, so I dropped it off a point, you know, but it was still great. So I'm just saying stuff like this, they could have established. It would have been very easy for them to tie in this guy into the show other than waiting, them waiting a whole, um, that whole time. And all that time that brand was missing. I think brand was missing a whole freaking season and they still didn't do anything with, with the blood Ravens, um, character. You know what I'm saying? So I'm 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 just saying like learning this now it's it's pissing me off a little bit because they could have done this. They could have done it. It would not have been hard to do. It's just a damn talking raven, you know? So let's let's continue here. Go back a little bit. Hope you guys are not mad at me. <laughs> you know. Fucking Rhaegar Targaryen, John is the heir to the Iron Throne. And he has the blood of both the First Men and Valyria, like Blood Raven. Yep. This dream of the Just dead like and him. a burning sword sounds like Azora High, a hero prophesied to save the world from darkness. Brynden's interest in this prophecy might come from his Targaryen side, because as Brynden says, there have always been Targaryens who dreamed of things to come, who had visions of the future. And many Targaryens are especially interested in the prophecy of Azora High. Rhaegar was into this prophecy. It might have been why he ran off with Lyanna and fathered John. Rhaegar's parents, Ares and Rhaella, got married because a witch said that Azor High would be born of their line. Aemon was. Hold on, I gotta hear that again. This is extremely interesting, guys. I don't know if you guys are enjoying it as much as I am, but this is really interesting because this is basically just a whole bunch of new information. So this is really interesting for me. Let's go back a little bit. On. Rhaegar's parents, Ares and Rhaella, got married because a witch said that Azor High would be born of their line. Aemon was mm. into this prophecy, and Brynden served with Aemon on the wall for 19 years. King Ares was into prophecy, and Shiera was into ancient scrolls. So much of Brynden's family was into prophecy, especially Azor High. So it seems likely that Brynden was also into this stuff. With all of his wisdom and visions as a Targaryen and a Greenseer, Brynden must have worked out that Jon is probably Azor Ahai, and this explains why Brynden helps him. In fact, it might explain a lot of what Brynden does. Judging by Aerys and Rhaegar's marriages, it seems that a particular Targaryen bloodline is expected to produce Azor Ahai. Maybe mm. the reason why Brynden was so focused on stopping the Blackfires wasn't just politics or beef with Bittersteel, it was Brynden trying to protect the special bloodline that he believed led to the hero who'd save the world. Mm. This might have been why King Aerys refused to have children, why Egg was chosen as king, even why Egg married a Blackwood with the blood of the First Man. This might all have been Blood Raven's influence, guiding the Targaryens on a hundred-year ah. Bene Gesseritine eugenic quest to breed Azor High. 
There's no knowing how deep this goes, but at the very least, it looks like Brynden helps John because he believes that John is the hero Westeros needs. The rightful king, Zora High, the hero who'll save the world, with the help of the Green Seer Bran. Brynden is combining the power of the Targaryens and the Old Gods, fire and ice, to save the world from the Long Night. But what about Daenerys? Daenerys obviously has a big part to play in the Song of Ice and Fire. Like Jon, she's a Targaryen who could fit the prophecy of Azor Ahai and is making a claim on the Iron Throne, so why doesn't Brynden help her? Danny spends most of the series in the That's East, true. across why the doesn't Narrow he? Sea, which might be Brynden's blind spot. The magic of Greensight seems limited to the lands where weirwoods grow, so Brynden might not know that this distant Dragon Queen is legit. Or, maybe, Brynden's already got someone on the job. In Book and Season 2, Daenerys meets Quaith, a mysterious masked woman who visits Danny in dreams and gives her cryptic advice. There's a theory that Quaith is actually Brynden's sister lover, Shiera Seastar. Both these characters are mysterious magical women associated with stars. And of course, Shiera was born a hundred years ago, so like Brynden, she'd need some magic to keep her alive. That's and true. as it happens, both Shiera and her mother are said to use magic to preserve their beauty. Maybe Shiera uses magic to extend her life as Quaith. Um, Shiera, Shiera Seastar is the lady that we learned about in the in the video that we said what's um what's west of Westeros. Um, she's the one that left and went to search. Right, she's the one that left and went to search, um, what was over there in the west. Um, he did this theory once. I don't want to go through the whole thing and you know, trying to baffle through it and all that. But just to let you guys know, if you want to know about who um exactly she is, you can go back and watch my reaction to that to that video. What's west of Westeros? If you want to get a thorough explanation of who. She is. And the mask Quaith wears might hide Shiera's famous beauty. So there's no strong evidence here, but it would be super cool if Quaith is Shiera. After all these years still working with Brynden, using sorcery to spy and influence, just as they For did in real. King's Landing, but now at a greater scale. Brynden mm. watches John and Bran in the west, while Shiera watches Danny in the east. The world of ice and fire guided by the most magical and incestuous power couple in the series. Brynden's influence could really be godlike. He can enter dreams, see through trees, control animals. So it's possible that Brynden sent these direwolf pups to keep an eye on the Starks. He might have sent the boar that killed King Robert and that bear Tormund fucked. The weirwood dream that led <laughs> Jamie to Brienne. Beric's magic in that weirwood cave. The Ghost of High Heart, Cold Hands and Sam, and Joraman's Horn, there are a million little ways that Brynden might influence the story, as well as through Danny and Bran and Jon and the last hundred years of Targaryen monarchy. Brynden is the Westerosi Illuminati, pulling the strings, <laughs> controlling everything, and it's all towards the goal of saving the world. So the Brynden's Westeros a hero, Illuminati. a good guy. <laughs> Right? It's funny. Bloodraven is a spooky motherfucker. <laughs> he looks like a corpse, a ghastly statue of twisted wood, old bone, and rotted wool, living in a dark cave that is literally littered with skulls. He hangs out with a corpse man and some creepy forest elves. He tells Bran to never fear the darkness. Darkness will make you strong. He often sounds more like the Emperor than like Obi-Wan. So if it looks like a bad guy and quacks like a bad guy, is Bloodraven a bad guy? There are theories that he's secretly evil, like maybe Brynden only wants Bran because Brynden's old body is dying and he plans to steal Bran's young body. Magic body snatching is a thing in Book 5. Others think that Brynden is secretly helping the White Walkers wipe out humanity. Melisandre does have a vision of Brynden where she thinks he's with the evil Great Other. And there is the possibility that Brynden is manipulated by the Children of the Forest and their psychic weirwood hive mind. Author George Martin has written stories about evil, seductive alien hive minds. But what we've seen in the text suggests that Brynden is something more interesting than a bad guy. He's a guy who does bad things for good reasons. He kills his half-brother to end a war. He lies and betrays to keep the peace. 
He spies, assassinates, manipulates, all for the sake of the realm. So Brynden's not straight up evil, he's something almost scarier. A man who gets good outcomes at any cost. Like, with Bran, Brynden empowers a hero to save the world, sure, but he also lures a crippled eight-year-old boy on a long dangerous journey that kills his friends to change Bran into something that he never wanted to become. Bran comes north, hoping that Brynden would be a nice wizard who'd fix his legs. He never signed up to become a tree boy, but by the time he arrives, he hardly has a choice. Brynden manipulates Bran. At one point, he magically edits Bran's memories so that he forgets Jamie crippling him. Brynden's agent Coldhands secretly feeds Bran human flesh, and possibly also the dead body of Jojen. Go watch that video. Also, in the show, a side effect of Bran's power is that he becomes robotic and dehumanised. Mira says it's like Bran died. So yeah, Brynden does terrible things, but what makes him an interesting character is that he does these bad things for good reasons. He's trying to save the world. Game of Thrones often explores this idea of ends justifying means. When Stannis considers killing a child to win the realm, he asks what is the life of one boy against a kingdom? And Davos says everything. If we sacrifice our basic humanity and compassion, what kind of world are we even saving? Brynden's extreme means may lead to unforeseen consequences. In Bran's dream in Book 1, Bran falls towards spikes of ice, and Brynden tells Bran to fly or die to force him to wake his magic. Bran succeeds and flies over the spikes, but he sees the bones of a thousand other dreamers impaled below, which might suggest that Brynden has tried to teach magic to other people this way. He has been sitting in his cave for 50 years, maybe in that time he's tried other students, and one theory suggests that Brynden taught Euron Greyjoy. Euron in the books is a mystical, scary figure. His ship is crewed by mutes, the deck painted red to hide the blood. He has a magic horn called Dragonbinder, and he captures and tortures priests, warlocks, and pregnant women. He's planning a mass blood sacrifice to transform himself into a Lovecraftian god. These are the last days, he says, when the world shall be broken and remade. A new god shall be born from the graves and charnel pits. The inspiration for this horrific apocalypse might inadvertently come from Bloodraven. Because there are hints of a connection between Euron and Brynden. Euron calls himself the Crow's Eye, and his banner is a single red eye crowned by crows, which might refer to the single red eye of Brynden, the three-eyed crow. In Book 4, Euron says that when he was a boy, he dreamed that he could fly, that if he just tries, if he leaps from a tower, he might fly. And this is just what happens to Bran. He falls from a tower, and Brynden visits his dream and tells him to try to fly. So maybe Brynden had seen magic potential in young Euron, and made contact, hoping to train him as a greenseer. But when he entered Euron's dream and flung the boy at psychic ice spikes, something went wrong, and Euron went rogue. Maybe seeing the Heart of Winter staring deep into the void broke Euron's mind somehow. Maybe seeing the threat of the walkers only inspired Euron to bring the Long Night. Maybe this tantalizing taste of arcane power led to Euron's obsession with collecting magic artifacts, warlocks, priests, crowns, and exploiting them to bring about his apotheosis. In the next book, Euron is set to bring some serious grim dark shit on Westeros, and this might not have happened if it weren't for Bloodraven being so single-minded in his goals that he goes round psychically traumatizing random children. You can make a similar argument about Brynden's political career. His harsh control of Westeros may have just fed more discontent and rebellion. So you can see Bloodraven's character as a criticism of the idea of ends justifying means. Maybe if we forget compassion and caution, we may only create more darkness. A lot of Bloodraven's early history is told in the Dunk and Egg prequel stories, collected in A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. It tells the story of the Blackfire conspiracy uncovered by Bloodraven and Maynard Plum, plotting and scheming and talking smack a hundred years before the main series. The Duncan Egg stories are short, self-contained tales of Westeros that take just a few hours to hear on audiobook. You can listen to all of these stories now for free with a 30-day trial at Audible. 
Membership gives you a free audiobook each month, and even if you cancel, you keep the books. You, to sign up, you, visit you segues, audible.com bro. slash ASX or text ASX to 500 so on point. <laughs> Thank you to these artists. Links to their work are below. And check out Paul Quentin, who writes brilliant analysis of Euron's Eldritch Apocalypse. Thank you to the patrons, including Amelie Ruppert, Greg Leask, right. Kenny Arnold, and Nobly Nose. All right. So, man, that was a lot. That was a lot. And that's the reason why I said um, that this was the only video I was doing tonight, because um, I knew, I kind of, like, had a vibe that this was going to be like a, a 30 minute 30 minute 40 minute video um that's crazy ain't it i mean i know you book readers out there are like yes there you go there you go <laughs> just kidding um but this is really interesting um as i said while i was do while i was reacting there you know it would have been nice if they included some of those clues that was in the book. Um, th um, that stuff that was written about him with the crow that, um, that, um, that, um, uh, Mormon had, that would have been really nice if they had that crow in the show. But I guess maybe they thought it would have been given away too much. Maybe, I don't know what it is. Cause I mean, um, I mean, it would have been crazy, ain't it? If wouldn't that be crazy if, when, if they had that crow in the show and he's saying King King, he landed on John's sword and was saying snow, 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 and you know calling John King and all of this other stuff, and then John dies. I mean, it would have been even more devastating because we would have been like so, um. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It would be even more confusing, be more gut-wrenching to see John die. Because, I mean, or even read about it. It would have been, because, I mean, you have all these promising stuff about John, and then he goes and dies. You know what I'm saying? Even though he comes back, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just certain things that I'm looking at now. And I'm looking at it from both perspectives. I'm trying to be as objective as possible. I'm trying to look at it from the book reader's perspective and also just the people who just watch the TV show like me, right? Um, so I'm trying to understand it from you guys' point of view also. And I do understand, as I've said in the past, I said I do understand how you guys, how the book readers feel. I understand it's not like I'm saying you guys, it's just that I don't like when, when you guys make it seem like, you know, the, sh the show is just absolute shit, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, those things happen, like, I don't like that, right, I really do believe that, you know, the book, the book readers, the TV series watchers, whatever you want to call them, you know, it's just an all-inclusive thing. Enjoy the TV show for what it is. Enjoy the, 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 the books for what it is. Because they're just not going to be the same. The books are going to have a lot more things fleshed out than the TV series. It's just that I'm just mad about the fact that this could have been just a small thing that they could have included in the show. And that's just what I'm mad about. I just think that certain things they could have included, no doubt about it. You know, so... It's just crazy to me, you know, it's just crazy to me, you know, but the the interesting thing about it that, that I'm saying, like the connection, the tie-ins with this blood rave, I mean, he could have, it's a possibility that he could have been the one manipulating everything from the start just to keep the Targaryens in power, you know what I'm saying, which is what we are seeing exactly right now in the TV series, it's like, it's all coming full circle to have, because the Starks are, the Starks are descended from the, the, the first men, right, and then you have the Targaryens from Valyria, right, so I'm just looking at it, and I'm, and, 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 and I'm saying just the times, like, okay, I need somebody that's just like me, so let me choose John. you know what I'm saying, and, and, there's a possibility that he really doesn't know about Daenerys, you know, cause she's pure, she's pure blooded Targaryen, you know what I'm saying? Um, but maybe the blood Raven, triad Raven, whatever you want to call him, 
maybe he was looking for somebody like John because he he's trying to combine the Targaryen blood with with the with the with the blood of the old man just like he is. So that's pretty dope, man. That that theory is absolutely off the chain. Loved every minute of it. I've never really paused one of these videos so much, to be honest, you know, and this is running on going 40 minutes now. I don't want it to be too long, but I hope you guys enjoy this reaction. Tell me what your thoughts are on it. Don't get too mad at me. It's just my opinion, and I ask you for yours. Let's have a, you know, a discussion about it in the comment section. It's no problem. You know, love you guys, man. I love everything that you guys say, whatever, if I can respond if I feel like I need to respond to it, I respond. I try to respond to all of you guys' comments. Um, it's no problem. Uh, as I said, as always, you guys know, I've always said, just keep it respectful. That's all. Don't, you know, call me an idiot or whatever, you know, I, you know, because I don't want to come out here and start calling you guys, you know, and start cussing you guys out because it, it can happen. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Right. So, um, because you always have, you know, people that come around and they feel like they need to call you names to exploit, to explain their point, which is, which is pointless in, 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 in itself. Right. So, um, so I'm just saying, you know, glad that you guys keep supporting me. Um, congratulations to me for hitting 800 subscribers. Thank you guys for doing that, for coming here, enjoying these reaction, man. And if you're here for whatever purpose it is, whether it's be for the animes, whether it's be for Game of Thrones, whatever it is, support the videos, man. Leave the like on the video, okay? And sub and and hit that notification bell if you already subscribed. Remember to hit that notification bell. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. You already know who it is. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. Don't worry. Your boy's going to get a haircut soon, okay? <laughs> Even though I know you guys don't give a damn, you know, because nobody complains about my hair, my suaveness, okay? But anyways, man, we out of here. It's your boy, Terabyte Reacts, and as always, peace. Have a nice time.